This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by the North Law Firm for car accidents and negligent security cases. Call Joe at 239-337-1191. And by Lee Health. For you looking live, of course, at the Blanchard Museum of African-American history and culture of Charlotte County. Been a fabulous time here. We're wrapping up our stay for four weeks and we're certainly looking back forward to coming back to Punta Gorda. Now we roll into a book that's done by the director here of this fabulous museum, The Womb Rebellion by P.W. Long. <laughs> okay, let's start off right here. Martha, who is P.W. Long? That is my pen name. Mm -hmm. And P.W. Long is the name of my great-grandmother, Priscilla Williams Long, who was a midwife. And of course, much of that book is about a midwife. When I read the book, I, the first thing I said to myself was, wow, I didn't even know that happened back during the days of slavery. Summarize what is the womb rebellion? The womb rebellion was resistance gynecological resistance by enslaved women. Mm -hmm. They used methods that were traditional to Africans to avoid having children, mm -hmm. okay? We were not talking about abortion, we we're talking about traditional methods that they brought from the homeland. Uh, in the story, in this particular uh, plantation, um, there is a uh, kind of a moral conflict between a young girl, Ruby, mm -hmm. and the midwife, her surrogate mother, Pearl. And what happens is that Pearl loves her work, as most midwives love what they do. But she's faced with this moral dilemma of how, when I bring children into the world and they are to live their whole lives in bondage, is that a good thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so through an act from the young rebellious Ruby, uh, she comes around and she joins. She actually encourages the women, and these women on this plantation absolutely refuse to have children. Mm. Now, why it's important is 1808, the government uh, said no more bringing enslaved people into the U.S. Of course, people still did, still did it. However, we had the colonial states. We did not, we hadn't, uh, slavery, were, we didn't have as many enslaved people in like Louisiana, Mississippi, those states. So what happened was breeding. In order to make the enslavement system work, mm -hmm. you had to have slaves. Got to okay? keep breeding. You have to keep breeding. Because so the inventory is not coming in. I mean, right. it was still coming in, but not in the mass not open in. way that it was. So you got to reproduce. So they forced women uh, to breed. Sometimes they use incentives, but basically, uh, women were raped. Whatever was necessary to increase the number of children. I'm trying to remember exactly, um, I think George Washington started out with about 10 enslaved people and when he died he had over 100 and some, mm -hmm. uh, not buying any more in between. And so on plantations these women, uh, you know, year after year were forced to have children. Now in the African tradition, the women, it was taboo for a couple to have a child in less than two years. This was in the African tradition mm -hmm. because the woman has body has to have time to become healthy and they did this to protect the children. So these women were even put in a position where traditionally and culturally they were violating their moral norms to mm -hmm. have baby after baby after baby without taking that time for their bodies to heal. Why, how did you come across this information and why were you, why did you feel it was important that you bring it to bear? That's one question. And two, 
the design of this cover with the red dress uh, that we're seeing on the screen. Uh, let's take the design of the cover first. Well, let me read a short poem to you. Go ahead. That I found somewhere that just came out to be perfect. Um, Continue to talk. Airtime. As, as I was uh, looking, just I was reading a book, and this woman had written this poem, a longer poem than this, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, my God, that's the cover. It's by a woman by the name of Jane, Jane Newton. She's deceased, but her daughter gave me permission to use her poem. And once you read the book, you will fully understand this. If you would wear a red gown, waste no time being old. Black is for the wise ones, crimson for the bold. Mm. And so this uh, was worn by a very bold, rebellious young woman. Mm -hmm. so, Talk about the... Um the, imp the uh, implications of the rebellion, what, uh, what came out of that rebellion? What came out of the rebellion is what I would call womb power. Uh, one of the things that the young Ruby says to the midwife is, I may be a, a poor enslaved girl, I may not own my labor or where I live, but the one thing I do own is my love in my womb. Mm -hmm. And so that was the implication, is that enslaved women really came back to understand, I do have power. And one of the things that, that I've been most interested in, I think throughout my career, has been the uh, presumed, the power of the presumed powerless. And so what this book says, that if enslaved women women who were under the yoke of bondage, if those women had power, then surely any woman now has power that she can use. If by virtue of having a womb, being a woman, mm -hmm. that womb energy, she has power. Who is this book for? This book is for everyone. Women especially love it. Uh, women of all ages, they, they get something from it. They love the story. They love the power that comes from the women. Are you avail available as well to go out and lecture and talk about this book and, and some of your other books? Yes. In fact, uh, one of the things that I've been asked to do is to come to the uh, Smithsonian Anacostia Museum September 22nd. And I, I do two, uh, actually, I do two workshops, uh, one workshop related to this. I, uh, 2016, I became a certified interpretive guide for the National Association for Interpretation. And one of the things we had to do was to come up with a program. And I was interested uh, in um, the granny system or the health care of enslaved people. And of course, midwives were part of that. So in doing that research and uh, getting that project done, I did a, a, a project out uh, at the um, African American Museum Association, but I developed what is called Powerful Doctoring Women. And Powerful Doctoring, uh, doctoring Women is actually, um, I do a reenactment of Pearl the Midwife, and I bring with me all of the herbs and uh, roots and things that an, an enslaved doctor, because she was a doctor, enslaved doctors would use. Mm -hmm. So I take that uh, in my burlap, I do the presentation, and the, the probably uh, the, the you know the two parts three parts of the presentation, one I talk about uh, preventative herbs that the enslaved use to prevent illness. Secondly, I talk about uh, the curative herbs, the kinds of things that the enslaved um, midwives and grannies would give to the children, like uh, asafetida. Uh, some people might remember wearing those little dirty bags around their necks, but that started in enslavement. Mm -hmm. That was something to prevent disease. And then the third part of it, though, is the resistance. I talk about the resistance, how herbs were used in resistance, gynecological resistance by the enslaved women. So I do that workshop. Now, for women who have read the book, I do something called Discover the Ruby Within. And I think I've just completed one of those. Um, I have to say that the responses were 
were wonderful. Um, I had even older women who discovered that they still had this power because we have a lot of myths about women and the cycles in our lives that we go through. And at each cycle of a woman's life, um, be she a young woman preparing for motherhood or in motherhood or in menopause, there is still that energy. And so when I do discovering the womb, uh, discovering the ruby within, I'm talking about discovering the womb power with you. And believe it or not, this is an excellent workshop for older women because we seem to feel like after you've had your children, or if you have never had kids, that you don't have that power. Yes, we do. And at the age of an older woman, while you might not be creating a child, you use that creative energy to create something that you mm -hmm. still give the world. Mm -hmm. And so after women have read the book, I uh, do a retreat. It's really not a workshop. It's a full day retreat on rediscovering or discovering the ruby within. And two questions we ask, who am I? And secondly, what greater things can I do in my life, of course, using my womb mm -hmm. power? That is just fascinating. Well, I encourage everybody to get out, purchase this book. Where, 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 where are some quick ways they can get their hands uh, on this book? Well, it is on uh, the website, The Womb Rebellion, right. on the website. And one of the things that I really enjoy doing uh, is working with groups like sororities or women's groups. Uh, having a group sponsor a mm -hmm. workshop or sponsor, uh, they you know read the book and then sponsor a retreat. Okay. So the womb rebellion, um, dot com. The womb rebellion dot com. We're gonna have that on the screen. Tell me what that is right there. Oh, this is from this is what is called our hurricane bible. We really have to handle it carefully here. Uh, we um, hold it up. Just kind of hold it up. Did this camera get it? Okay. And then you can put it back down. Yes. Just kind of. Yes. Okay. See what now, happens? To all it. right. Yes. Now the Hurricane Bible, as it relates to the Blanchard, Blanchard House, House. Yes. Where we are physically right now. We opened the Blanchard House on in May 2004. Uh, in on August 13th, Hurricane Charlie comes in. So the roof comes off and there's water and and we had a plan. We take everything down, so we weren't worried about that. However, uh, when the roof came off, we have a, have a picture in there of some of the men on the roof going up through the attic, um, you know, putting the tarp on. One of the men, just this Bible was just like this, we've done nothing to it, put his hand just to pick up the Bible. Mm -hmm. This Bible was not in the Blanchard House. Really? It blew into the Blanchard House during the storm. What a great story. And... I'll just read this. Uh, this ironically, this little Bible was blown in from parts unknown and was found drenched and discolored and opened to the page from the book of Job, the story of a man beset by trials. On that open page at the very top, so the man put his hand right there, on the very top appears the words from chapter 30, verse 22. Thou liftest me on the wind, Thou makest me ride on it, and thou tossest me about in the roar of the storm. When he put his hand there, we said, we will go through the storm, but we will rebuild, and we will be here. And of course, that's what been 14 years ago. Wow, what a story. Well, it has just been fascinating for us to, uh, you know, launch our show out of space and land right here on this particular real estate and spend four weeks here at the uh, Blanchard House Museum and uh, highlighting some of the great things that are happening here in Punta Gorda, specifically here, and we're looking forward to coming back in the future. Well, certainly, thank you for coming, and we invite you to come back. Our new exhibit opens September 29th, The African Roots of Southern Cooking. All next year is gonna be about food, from food from colonial food, to Gullah food, to Creole food, it's all about food. But the first meal that was ever prepared, the first dinner ever served, was served on the continent. There you go, of Africa. Oh, yes. That's it, people. Stay right there. As the saying goes in this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those, like all the fine people here at the Blanchard House Museum, of African American history and culture of Charlotte County. Wonderful. <laughs> Leap it, signing out.
<laughs> Give her a hand. Hey, this is Lee Pitts, the host of Lee Pitts Live right here on Fox 4. Glad you checked us out here on YouTube. You want to not miss any of our shows, so we encourage you to subscribe by clicking that red button at the bottom there. And uh, all our Lee Pitts Live shows will come directly to you, conveniently located.